All right, well, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new to the channel, did you hear that thunder? It's, it's, uh, it's summertime right now here in St. Augustine, so you're probably gonna hear a lot of uh, thunder on the uh, outside of my house. So if you do hear that, just know that, hey, this is part of living in uh, paradise. What we're talking about in the last couple of videos, we were emphasizing on selling, right? If you're gonna relocate here uh, to St. Augustine from wherever you are, chances are there's a 50-50 chance you're probably gonna sell your house and then bring, bring down that cash with you to buy a house here, or you might rent something back home. Uh, but for those of you that are thinking of selling, uh, we're gonna be publishing a few videos to help you with that process. You probably have a realtor back home, but we figured, hey, why not give you some inside information on how we do things here in St. Augustine where we help clients that are gonna sell. So today we're gonna to be talking about pricing your home correctly. Now, this is probably the most important part of selling your house. And you would think that that's obviously, you know, obvious, but uh, for some realtors, it's, it's no easy task. And for some sellers, it's no easy task as well. For the seller, obviously there could be some emotional attachment to the home, right? It's the first time that little Johnny took his first steps. Uh, it's the house that when you finally moved into from renting with your spouse, uh, it's your first home together, or it could be grandma's house that was passed down to you and there's a lot of sentimental value there. So obviously we see that emotional attachment to homes when you're about to sell it for sellers. For realtors, it's difficult as well, right? So it, it's more uh, of, of an art and a science than just science, right? So uh, when I say it's a science, right? You have a 2,400 square foot home versus a 1,400 square foot home, right? Obviously the numbers, you know, people say the numbers don't lie, right? So that's the science part of it but there's an art to it as well, right? Uh, the house could be sitting on a cul-de-sac, it might have a pond view, uh, or there's something about the house that makes it a little bit more valuable than the other one, right? There's a pool, the same house, but one has a pool. Or if there's something about how it's maybe facing a sunset or a sunrise, right? This, this is where the art comes in, in terms of pricing your home correctly. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that pricing is difficult. Once you decide to sell, there's, there's a part of you that's motivated to do that, right? Your motivation. It could be pain or pleasure, right? It could be pain from a perspective of like, you know, you have a loved one that passed away and now you have to, that family has to sort of sell the house. No one wants to stay with it, they're gonna have to sell it. Or there could be pain in a sense that unfortunately um, your love with your significant other has died and now you're going through a divorce. There's a lot of pain in that situation as well, right? So what could be motivating you could be your pleasure. For example, um, let's say you, you want, you're sizing up to a bigger home, you're relocating to a new state and you're super excited about doing that. Uh, you got a new job that's really pushing you out. There's no, they're telling you can't stay, you gotta go and you're excited about going, right? So it's usually pain or pleasure that's motivating you. But once you've decided uh, on that motivation, you wanna use that motivation as fuel to continue down the path of pricing it correctly and, sell, and ultimately selling your home. The biggest thing I'll stress here is that you wanna hang on to that motivation throughout the entire process. Selling your home is sometimes very, very stressful and so you wanna just keep that end goal in mind. We like to tell our clients that uh, the best chances of your house selling is when it first initially hits the market. Why is that? Well, it's because it's fresh new inventory that's coming in to the market. So that's, that's like, a, I, would, I would attribute it to a, like um, the new sneaker. I mean, if you guys are sneaker fans, people buy sneakers and they flip them, right? Or uh, the new album that comes out or like the new PS6, you know, when it first comes out or the new iPad, right? Like the new iPhone, whatever it is. When it first comes out, there's a lot of buzz behind that, that, uh, that uh, I'm trying to be sophisticated with the term. Uh, when it when that first product comes out, right? So the same way when your house initially hits the market It's so fresh that you want to capture the uh, the audience's attention when it hits the market So it is said that on average the buying process takes around three to six months The first one to three months the buyers are basically doing their preliminary research. They're looking at neighborhoods schools uh, mortgage options, um, getting pre-approved, etc. The next two to four months, they begin to actively look at homes, which means that they're basically visiting homes, they're attending open houses, and they're working with their realtor to find their ideal home. The last phase, which is about one to two months, they submit an offer, they begin to negotiate the contract and go through the closing process. When your house first hits the market, it enters a pool of buyers that are traversing through these three phases of the buying process. The buyers that are in the first phase, the ones that are doing the preliminary research, they're probably gonna miss the boat, right? Because they're too busy doing research. They're not ready to buy a house yet. They're just investigating the schools, the neighborhoods, right? So they're probably not a real contender 
uh, of buying your home once it hits the market. Maybe they'll go visit your house and they'll kick the tires around, but they're not really serious yet because they're so new and they're, they're like so excited that they're gonna probably look at other options. The folks on the third phase of this home buying process are probably not gonna look at your house as well because they've already narrowed their house to one or two homes, right? They've, they've been through the process, they're, they wanna get out of that, that uh, buying process they're so tired and they're excited now that they finally picked the last two homes right so they're negotiating contracts and things of that nature so they're probably not going to look at your house that means that the folks in the middle of this buying process is your buyer pool the folks that are within a two to four month range within this this phase the first half the one to two months when they first initiate enter this phase they're super excited right they're looking at zillow they're actively looking at zillow they're looking at the listings that their realtor is sending and they're really excited about you know going to a house hunt the second half of that group the ones that are in the third to fourth month phase have already narrowed down their search they probably got down uh, to five houses they definitely identify the neighborhood and so uh, i just want to emphasize that that pool itself is sort of uh, delineated that's the buyer's backdrop okay these are the pool of buyers that you want to have them put a sweet offer on your home. So now you understand the buyer process and now you wanna list your house and you wanna put the perfect price on your home. Okay, this is where you can do one of two things. You can do it the old fashioned way or you can do it the new school way, which is what we do. Before I go into that, I just wanna give you two analogies. The first one is a very famous pirate from the golden age of piracy. It was, uh, that individual was uh, around during the 1650s to the 1730s. That's right, Mr. Captain Jack Sparrow himself. This shot is not meant for you. In the movie, Captain Jack Sparrow has one bullet that he's essentially trying to save to get his number one nemesis, Hector Balboza. Ten years you carry that pistol, now you waste your shot. He didn't waste it. Just like Captain Jack Sparrow, you have one shot when you list your house to get it right the first time, to be aggressive and to get it right. You know, I can't, I can't stress that enough because you don't want to dilly-daddle when you put your house out there, right? Your house is a great uh, asset and you don't want to be playing patty cake when you go to market. The second analogy is a great Hall of Fame pitcher, Nolan Ryan, right? If you guys don't know who he is, you should definitely Google him. Uh, but if you're my age, if you're on my age, you know who he is. So Nolan Ryan is a uh, Hall of Fame pitcher, probably the best there is. He's like the Tom Brady when it comes to pitching. You know, I, I compare you listing your home, like if you're uh, Nolan Ryan and you're, up, you're going up against a no-name hitter, right? Are you going to be throwing him change up and curve balls and like wasting your arm on this no-name person? No, you wouldn't do that, right? You'd go in there and you'd punch him out in three strikes, give him the heat and that's it, get him out. And I look at listing your house in the same way. If you really narrow down your motivation and you want to get the house sold, don't play patty cake. Do not play games, you know, like the old school way where they price it high and over time you just chop down the price. You're, you're basically losing equity when you do that, okay? I can't stress that enough. When you price your house high, what happens is the people in that second phase, right? The ones that are two to four months, they might come out to see, they, they might come out to see your house, but they're going to your house not wanting to fall in love with your house because they already hate the price, right? They can easily look up your competition and they'll say, hey, this house is very similar to this one. You know, the pictures look great, hopefully, right? If you've got a great realtor and they're going to go check out the house, but they, they're going in not wanting to fall in love with the house, right? Maybe the wife is excited about it. The husband's sort of like, ah, or vice versa, right? And uh, what happens if you do get an offer, they're going to come in slow and they're going to come in low. And what tends to happen if, if nothing if nothing's happening, if there's no traction, your house starts to sit on the market. And now people who are traversing through that process of buying, they're falling off, right? They're, they're executing, how, they're getting contracts on another house and they're getting out of the market. And your house is just the one sitting there that they're just passing by and all of a sudden it's got 90 days on the market. Then there's 120 days and then there's 180. And then as, it, as the, t the days on the market last, people are gonna start asking the question like, hey, what's wrong with the house? Is there something wrong with the house? And you don't want buyers asking that question, what's wrong with the house? Believe me, you don't want that. Ideally, what you wanna do is price the house at fair market value or just below. And we're gonna go into that in another video, but essentially, 
you want to price your home in such a way that you create demand. And once you do that, the offers will come in high and sky, like sky high. Instead of, I'm, I'm trying to be cute here, okay? All right, so just bear with me, okay? Instead of having the, the offers come in slow and low, they're gonna come in green and clean, baby, okay? Cash and fast and sky and high, okay? Sky and high, I, I gotta work on that one. But you get the point. Hey, if this video was helpful for you in any way, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to the channel if you're thinking about listing or buying a home here in St. Augustine or Northeast Florida. My wife and I, we would love to help you in any way that we can. God bless you and stay safe.